A delayed game is eventually good, but a rushed game is forever bad. Well, I guess these needed an extra decade or two to cook then, Jesus Christ! <laughs> I'm sure we all know at this point of some of the problems that are plaguing the gaming industry. Everyone in this platform hasn't shut up about longer development times, extrapolating budgets, highly optimized, target, group focused, whatever the fluff these are supposed to be, and the audacity to keep charging more and more and more for products that deliver less and less and less. So I won't bore you to death by going over all of that again. Instead, I will get right to the point. There is an outlier to this phenomenon. Unaffected by rising development costs and seemingly immune to the classic This game's been in development for 8 trillion years and it is the best thing we have ever made into I've made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment pipeline that's becoming all too common as of late. Obviously, I'm referring to Nintendo, and their unparalleled success with the Nintendo Switch. When we look at modern day gaming, Nintendo can seem like an oasis, bumping out quality title after quality title non-stop for 7 years while others struggle to release even one competent game per year. And yes, Nintendo has problems, major problems in other areas that people online will rightfully freak out over again and again. And they should, by the way, what is this? Come on now, come on now, come on, just come on. But the one area Nintendo hasn't struggled in has been the quality and consistency of their titles. And this fact has kept them relevant and more popular than ever, since arguably the most important part of running a gaming business is, you know, games? Good games? And it seems like Nintendo's always had that in the bag. However, we are about to witness a change. The Switch? It is old. It's that one successful YouTuber who fell off and has about 144 million subscribers but is struggling to remain relevant in the modern day. And that's fine, it's the circle of life really, it's just consoles come, consoles go, it's how things are. But one aspect of Nintendo consoles that's been true since the Wii is, they are usually one generation behind on tech. Wii? More like GameCube 1.5. Wii U? Sure, Grandpa, welcome to the HD era in the mid-2010s. But with the Switch, slightly different scenario. It being a handheld meant that when it was released back in 2017, it wasn't that Nintendo barely upgraded their graphical power again. It was going from this to this. They had the most powerful handheld in the market at the time. A big part of the marketing was console games on the go. And if you look at it as this handheld device, <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. But now... Console gaming on the go has been normalized, so their next console will need to be pretty powerful to stand out and it seems pretty safe to assume that we know what the Switch 2's power is looking like. Through leaks that have been around for over a year and frequent slip-ups from partner manufacturers, we know the Switch 2 is expected to perform similarly to a PS4 Pro. Another massive leap, a monumental change in tone from the old 900p 30fps shot straight into 1080p 60, maybe even higher. With Nintendo, we're seeing the course of history repeating itself right in front of our eyes again, and we know where that leads. With the PS5 and the Xbox Series X pushing 4K visuals, making every texture more realistic than real life, spending years developing what amounts to the same gameplay ideas we've seen since the Xbox 360, just now prettier. And also, they take up 100 plus gigabytes now because fluff you, that's why. Compressing these files? That would ruin the crisp visuals on this pebble! Is that what you want? The pebble? Gone? Reduced to mush on a screen? You're not a true gamer, man. It's like I don't even know you anymore. You could... You could fix that by subscribing to the channel to catch more videos like this one and make me a happy cat because insert YouTuber graph... Oh no! This is your call to action. Subscribe, please. Needless to say, I'm petrified at the prospect of Nintendo making the same mistakes. And to be clear here, there's nothing wrong with a big budget production, not at all. Your The Last of Us's, your Red Dead 2's, they're amazing and there's space and there's a market for them. Where Sony and Xbox went wrong was when they hyper-focused into making every game the next graphical leap. Every game the next biggest open world. Every game the next big thing. And they don't have to be. Hell, we've seen it. They can't be. They actively conditioned their fans to expect leaps in graphical fidelity with every new release. They actively sabotaged their chances of running a profitable business with these games. And right there. 
that's what Nintendo has to do differently with the Switch 2. They'll have in their hands now the power to create high fidelity, massive experiences for every series they own. And I know, that may sound incredible, a dream come true even, but they cannot be stretched thin. That's not to say we won't see any of these massive endeavors from Nintendo. The next 3D Mario should by all means go all out in every possible way. Same thing with 3D Zelda, and maybe even Smash Bros and Animal Crossing. However, Nintendo must balance these AAA massive releases with a constant stream of smaller title support. Don't go all out for the next Mario Party. Don't make Kirby into a 40 hour long open world and cherish easier, smaller productions that you're certain can turn a profit. Your 2D Marios, Yoshis, Kirbys, Zeldas, Metroids, your Paper Marios, Mario and Luigi's, Nintendo has the biggest collection of franchises of any gaming company out there, so they must not leave these IPs gathering dust. A Pikmin game doesn't need to be huge, it doesn't need to break the bank, and I'm sure Pikmin fans themselves would much rather get a smaller, high quality Pikmin 5 in the the next few years instead of waiting another f <laughs> decade sorry there um as a new pikmin fan i am scared bring back star fox as a small five hour long campaign make it fun make it replayable make a mario maker 3 most of the assets already exist for that anyway release a couple updates and you'll have a massive hit over on twitch and youtube Fill those empty slots between big releases because that's exactly what Sony and Xbox have failed to do. In making all of their IPs massive AAAs, they've hindered themselves. They've created unrealistic expectations that just can't be met. If Nintendo is able to keep consistency high through smaller, curated, high-quality titles for every niche out there intertwined with the eventual big-budget epics of Zeldas and Marios, that's how they'll stay ahead. That's how they can succeed again because Nintendo has always succeeded because of their games. Even the Wii U, which had terrible advertisement and a weird controller, it also didn't have relevant games on release. And when they came around, it was already too late. The Switch succeeded because of its new ideas and hybrid design, yes, but from day one you had Breath of the Wild to play. Wait a couple months and you're playing Mario Kart and Splatoon, and before you even had time to process that, Mario Odyssey is here saying, Hello there, I'm about to score a 97 on Metacritic. <laughs> games. Games are at the core of Nintendo. It seems so obvious, but it must be said. Video game consoles are nothing without their games. They're paperweights. Another example, look at Xbox One. When it released, they pivoted hard away from games and into multimedia living room device. Of course people hated that. We're all here for the same reason, video games. So that's the conclusion I've reached. Nintendo is sitting at a crossroads, the follow-up to their most successful console coming out within a year. A more powerful and, let's be real here, more expensive machine is due to be announced any day now. And yet, we're still getting a decent lineup on the Switch. It is of utmost importance for Nintendo to guarantee that whatever they have cooking for next year can match or even surpass the momentum they had in 2017. If they want to succeed again, it will be harder. The novelty of a hybrid console is gone and there is still for competition in the space because back then there wasn't any competition at all. I'm anxiously anticipating whatever they have next for us and I'm sure that from the very first reveal trailer we'll be able to tell if it's history in the making or history history in the making. Thank you so much for watching to the end. Don't forget to subscribe as it helps out a small channel like me a whole lot and I appreciate it a ton. Leave a comment telling me what you think the future will look like for Nintendo and with that, have a wonderful day. Goodbye!